Tudo Beleza, hoy vamos a hablar con la banda británica Malabora, una banda que, bueno, se le ve muchas ganas, mucha pasión en lo que hace, un mensaje muy claro, un mensaje de conciliador, un mensaje de unión, un mensaje pues de que todos somos iguales y ojo al dato porque seguramente oirás hablar de ellos en el futuro. I am with uh, Larry and Jess from Malabora Band from UK from Bristol and I want to ask you first of all I want to ask you about your new single Skin your last single because I I like it and I want to ask you about uh, the meaning of the song is about feeling different uh, can you explain me in more detail about this meaning Yeah, um, thank you so much for having us. Hola, ¿qué tal? No habla español. <laughs> um, so, Hola, ¿qué tal? Skin, Me gusta yes, la paella. Um... Ok. <laughs> sí. sí. Um, skin, skin is about, yes, it's about feeling different. Um, we, we both um, have experienced uh, disability and chronic illness. Um, okay and neurodivergence and um, that experience kind of makes you feel quite alienated in the world sometimes it almost everyone is it. being alienated i understand you <laughs> yeah feeling alienated and almost feeling like there is a rule book that everyone has access to but you've not seen and so feeling like you're being treated differently and, and you don't really understand why um and it's a bit of an angry response to that to say you know, we'll, we'll never be like you. We might have tried when we were younger, but um, that's not going to work. <laughs> um, and, you know, we're, we're kind of trying to be proud and defiant about being different and um, feeling like we're not going to conform, even though there is pressure to be sort of normal. Okay. Do you feel that uh, people with a disability uh, and understand this message? And yes, yes, we're feeling that the song really reached people who uh, understand how it feels to be treated differently and um, who feel, yeah, left out or isolated from society because they are disabled or because they are autistic or something like this. Yes. And um, yeah, that's that's really how we've managed to reach our audiences by talking about these issues. Okay. Your this single skin was produced by uh, a bearded of, of skin red, uh, Mike Demus. What do yes. you think that Mike brought new to your to your music? It was it was so cool to produce music with Mikey. I mean, I've been a fan of skin red since I was younger. I remember seeing skin red for the first time when I was like 15 or 16, and yes. it was. And I've seen them so many. I, I think they're one of the bands that I've seen the most out of, out of anyone. You know. Do you, do you know the first uh, Skindred uh, previous is called Dubguar? I don't Dubguar, remember yeah, if yeah. I don't remember if uh, Mike uh, um, is is in this band. I don't remember, it but uh, the the singer uh, uh, yeah. Dubguar it was a uh, a big band in the new metal era. I, I remember very well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I've. You know, yeah, I've followed and, and watched Skin Red a lot and always found their performances to be really inspiring. And then, so to find out as soon as we'd uh, got the deal with Marshall and Krang that he was going to be producing it, like they sort of asked us, they were like, okay. do you, uh, how do you guys okay. feel about Mikey Demas producing your EP? You stay in contact with, with, uh, uh, with him uh, because Marshall Records, no? Be yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And um, yeah, it was uh, such a crazy thing to be told that we were going to be working with this guy that we'd looked up to for so long and um yeah so yeah to, writing alongside him was was just so cool and he was adding just little bits of magic everywhere that just it, uh, and there were some things where it was like okay we need to think about what kind of mood we're making here but so, some of the stuff was really little tweaks on whether it was what symbol was being used or Um, a certain harmony or something and all the, all, all the little details when you look back makes such a huge difference on the music and he's, he's a wizard at that kind of stuff you know he's been doing it for 20 years and he um, he's obviously incredibly good at it and so to have that little sort of 
uh, sprinkles of wisdom and magic over our music was just such a, it was a pleasure to be a part of it. He has very background, no? Because he <laughs> he worked with different uh, bands and is kind with, uh, actually is one of the most important uh, British band in, in the world, I think. I I watched it uh, one time, I assisted in a live show in Resurrection Festival four years ago, and remember uh, because uh, the show it was uh, a party, uh, because uh, there, uh, he played a cover of Prodigy and <laughs> different different uh, kind of songs that all all the audience uh, stay uh, enthusiastic, no, with uh, all the songs. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. The, their crowd control is yeah just the best. I mean, we 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 opened for them in Bristol in June. They played Bristol Sounds Festival. They were headlining, and we were first on on the same stage, which was crazy for us as well. And mm -hmm. um, so we had the uh, sort of pleasure and just the education of having played a stage and then watching Skin Red play the exact same, like use the same space and to see what they did with it and what they did with the crowd and everything. We just got to sit there and just, just learn. It was just such a masterclass. Do you um, learn some tricks about this uh, crowd control with with the king or...? Yeah, I mean, it's. I think the thing that that I took from that performance particularly was the flow. So they played for like a, like an hour and a bit, um, but the, the show almost never stops. It's like they sort of, they walk on and they're building up and then by the time all the full band's playing, everyone's already going mental. And then there's there's no kind of like downtime in between songs or anything. It's just like the next song, the next song. And then, and then there's a little acoustic bit and then they all go off to one side and then they come back and it's, you know, it's just, It's so slick. It's so slick. It's so well considered and fine tuned. And from talking to Mikey afterwards and stuff, you know, they it's it's clear how much effort goes into constructing a really, really uh yeah, slick uh, narrative around the performance. Do you prefer live shows when the band um drop and then uh, go up again? Or when the band uh, set you in on the top all the time? I guess it depends how long it is. I think for a, for like a headline sets that are like over an hour, I think you've, you've got to bring it down a bit. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's good to have a bit of variety and that makes the big moments really big when you bring it down a little bit. But if you only have a 30 minute support slot, which is what we usually do, yeah, um, it's just gotta be. we don't have time to do an acoustic. We don't think doing a, a, a gentle song during a 30 minute support slot is a good idea for us. Yeah. We just want to just go big for 30 minutes and make it as memorable as possible. Yeah. yeah I understand. It's different when you are a support band and when you are a, a, a headliner, no? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. I I am hearing you. I am hearing your first song, Ego. I suppose that is your first oh. song. I, it's it's oh. true. Ego? Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you Sorry, feel that? Oh, you're back. No, yes. Ego. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, do you feel that in these four years do you have developed new skills as musicians? Yeah. Massively. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I think you can just tell by listening. If you listen to <laughs> Ego and then you listen to Skin or the the songs that we've got coming out um, at the moment, it's like, it's quite different. It's the, You can still tell that it's us. You can still hear our signature in the grooves and in the way that the songs are structured and the sound of it, it kind of. But it's just, I mean, these days it's way more mature and considered. And I mean, back in those days, like sort of four or five years ago, um, for me at least personally, like my approach to songwriting was quite, um, it was, I could, it was a little bit surface level. I think it was the way we used to write songs when we were more junior was like writing songs that we thought sounded good and riffs that were cool and thing, you know, choruses that sounded big and things that were interesting. And then the vocals would go on top and that was kind of it. And the vocals meant whatever they meant. And then that was it, song done. Whereas now it's like the emotional intent behind everything is always is really considered, whether it's the the lyrics or the instrumental. It's, just, it, it's all got to come back to the intent that we want to deliver behind the song. So it's, yes. for example, Skin, you talked about the sort of the... Uh, Uh, the idea of, of feeling different and feeling frustrated and angry about that. 
that's something that when I started writing the instrumental, I was really sitting with that feeling. I was having a day where I really felt I was struggling with uh, communicating with people and what was happening with myself and my own journey with being ill for a long time. And that really, really sort of came out in, in how I was writing the instrumental. And then so the dialogue then develops between me and Jess where she develops that into a vocal part and lyrics while us and the rest of the band build the, the song around it. And we're always sort of checking back in on how is the song delivering the intent that we started with, yeah. which is why I think the songs that we do these days are so much more um, mature and just complete, really, than like five years ago is when it was way, it was way less yeah. thought through, really. Yeah, and I think, you know, now we have a clear identity and we know what we're trying to say and what we're trying to do. It's like what Larry said, you know, we think ego's a good song, yeah. but there's there there I'm isn't the, there isn't the same deep sort of um, emotional c uh, intent behind it as there is with our music now, and I think you can tell the difference. And also, I hadn't learned to scream at that point. Yeah, there's no screaming. <laughs> so it's quite different vocally, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and, I and feel and that you have your own personality in that song. I. I agree with you. No, now you are more um, a, a greater band, but at the same time, I feel that your first uh, record uh, represents your music as a band. Is is my my opinion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with that. And I, I mean, I think <laughs> since then, as well as well as everything else, we've just got better at what we do. We've been doing it for that long, and we have been we played a lot of shows and we've done a lot of recording sessions and we've worked with loads of great producers. Mm. Like we, we did a few, well, we did that, the origins EP with Ramesh who's worked with people like Premier Horizon and Nova twins and all these people. And at, at the moment we're doing some music with um, Lewis Johns, who's worked with all sorts of uh, bands that are just incredible. And so as we've been exposed to these people and obviously the likes of Mike Demas that, It's just naturally you just get better and you learn how to make music that sounds better than than what you did five years ago. You are learning every time. Every time. Okay. Uh, what are your most proud of uh, you have achieved in in these years? Uh, maybe when you won the Keram Prize or or when? I think for us, yes. It, The most proud we've been this year was having hundreds of people voting for us to win the deal by Crying Radio and to sign our first record deal it meant a huge amount for us, particularly with Marshall Records. You know, we'd, we'd, the boys had been using Marshall amps for, for years, so to sign with that record label really meant a huge amount. And the culmination of everything really was to play Dano Festival it's it was it, you know it's been a dream for us it's the reason why we're in a band <laughs> a big reason why we're in a band you know you want to play the biggest rock and metal festival in, in the UK you just you, you want to you want to be on that big stage and we've been to Dano Festival for so many years and dreamed about being on the stage so this year to be able to play it was a huge moment Uh, what's your dreams? Do you like uh, maybe being a headliner in Alessandra Palace in three, four years? <laughs> It could be. Yeah, I like it. We like the sound of that. Yeah, that sounds we pretty have, good. We have, have, we have big dreams. Yeah. You know, we want, we want to be an arena band. We want to play arenas. That's what we want, you know, for our big got career goals. But yeah, we want to headline huge venues and tour around the world and You know, we've not even been to the, we've not been to Europe yet. We've not been to mainland Europe. We know we have fans there. We want to get there. We want to get to the USA. Um, yes. And we want, we USA want to USA is of one of your dreams to, to play the, in, in that uh, continent yet. America yeah, yeah. Latina? <laughs> or, or, <laughs> All of it, everything. Argentina? <laughs> Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. We want to get everywhere. <laughs> we know we have thousands of fans in America. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the US is our largest uh, country for listeners. Yeah. Um, and more so yes. than the UK, even though we're from here. So, it, I mean, we absolutely have to get out there at some point. We have to go to. It's very yeah. hard to, to, 
to achieve to uh, achieve goals in in America to British bands. I bring me horizon that uh, you told uh, is one of the band that uh, have successful in in America, but another ones. I I think that the, it's very very difficult to 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 be successful there. No, I I yes. I feel. Yes, well, uh, what's really helped us reach audiences in America is TikTok. Um, that's that's how we have so many listeners in America. People who listen to our music is because they found us on TikTok. Um, so it's helped us reach a global audience. Whereas before, without TikTok, we would have just been a UK band, yeah. <laughs> you know. But we now have fans all over the world. It's great for us because it means it means that we can build audiences in different markets before we play there so i mean we've got our eyes set on all the eu festivals like you said like you were saying resurrection fest and yeah rock we want to play resurrection fest rock, Do you like rock, it rock, <laughs> yeah oh yeah that would be sick that'd be amazing um, yeah and like all of the eu festivals that that everyone plays and, and as uh where... sorry uh you told about tiktok uh do you have um a professional user uh in tiktok or are you the 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 yeah, workers person. that? Uh, yeah, it's us. It's us. Yeah, it's literally just us. We, we it's just us. We sit there and think about what might or might not work, and yeah, kind of make the videos anyway, whether or not we decide I mean, it will work. It would be it would be great to have a professional TikTok person doing it for us. <laughs> um, maybe one day, but but I, you know, the we've just done it ourselves a lot of the time. I've just uh, you know like propped up my phone and. Um, recorded myself like mouthing along to the lyrics of one of our songs and it's gone viral and it's reached you know like hundreds of thousands of people just by doing that so it's quite amazing um, but yeah, yeah it's all incredible. us all us okay and and do you do you think that the old school uh, way uh, release an uh, album uh, release some video clips uh, is the past or Maybe it's, you need to combine different styles, social networks, all the school. What you what do you think about it? I think I think the old method of releasing an album and a couple of YouTube videos and things. I think that works if you already have a network and uh, a background in the music industry, and you have okay. the support. If you have the support of the industry, who are gonna push it out to people okay but the like algorithm that, of youtube uh, support you and and some labels big labels yeah. encourage you i think yeah i think yeah you need a lot of industry backing if you're going to just release an album and expect it to reach people you know nowadays but if you're a band like us who we weren't really well connected in the music industry um so the our old method, like we did years ago, to release music and kind of see what happens, it wasn't working. It was getting nowhere because the music industry wasn't backing us and helping us push it out to audiences. So that's why we think TikTok is a really powerful tool for wow. artists who don't have that music industry backing because it's at the tips of your fingers, you can just reach these audiences that you wouldn't have been able to before. But do you think that is more TikTok is more powerful than Kerrang magazine or BBC Radio or for you? I think I think it's important to use both. I think I think they do different things to be honest, um, because um, the established methods like R Radio One and Kerrang magazine they have their dedicated audiences that. There are people who every week will tune into the Dan Carter Rock Show and they'll listen to every band and they'll look them all up or they'll, or they'll be constantly looking at uh, Kerrang! magazine. And it's still really important to uh, be able to access those markets because that's these are the people who go to loads of shows and it's just, you can't ignore that. You, no. you, you, you would, if you just put all your effort into TikTok and ignore, in, ignored all the conventional stuff, I I, in my opinion, that's that would be unwise. But... Um, what TikTok is for is is just finding new people that, and it's sort of like a really niche way of of um, 
accessing people that like your very specific thing that you're doing, um, your like, very specific genre or your messaging or whatever it is about your band. Um, yeah. You can find, no matter where they live in the world, you can find them and you can create a, a community of people where in, in the conventional way would take so much more time, effort and money to do it. Yes, it's very yeah, interesting you... uh, that you are talk to, talk to me because... I am from another generation when doesn't exist any mobile or internet. And for me, uh, all school is the only way that uh, I hear music. I hear music uh, watching videos in YouTube channels or hearing albums, uh, entirely albums in the Spotify platform. And I don't understand very well how is the way to uh, people love only hear 10 seconds or 20 seconds of a song only the chorus only the 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 main part of the song and for me is when you told us uh, these uh, statements um, i i feel that i am living in in a different era <laughs> as the young young people yeah <laughs> um, yeah i mean to be honest, TikTok, it's, it has obviously its benefits, but it's also, it is, as you say, it, it, it's not great for encouraging people to appreciate a whole piece of music. Like an album, yeah. because, or an yes. album, because it's very because driven Because of on that, what nobody span. records an uh, album nowadays. <laughs> I, well, I, yes. I think so. Yeah, because... because you can make a career on TikTok, but you have to just release singles. You know, it's not, it's not, but we do want to release albums. Um, yeah. So it's why it's... The concept TikTok of the album, it will be disappear, maybe. Yeah. Only sees the single and 10 seconds on the single. Yeah, that's the danger yeah. of it. I think it's important. And this is something that we, we talk about a lot is all these things, whether it's TikTok or YouTube or whatever, it's, they're all just tools that, as as, yes. as as an artist, that we have at our disposal to try and reach new people. TikTok is essentially it's like it's like a fishing net. You're just like trying to scoop through people who might like your music, and everyone else who doesn't like it just kind of slips through. Um, that doesn't mean that that's the only way that people can interact with your music. I mean, what I was astonished by when our music started going, when Jess's video started going viral on TikTok, is the relationship between. Um, TikTok views and Spotify streams. Like you can see it, we have all the, you know, like all the all the charts and graphs and stuff. You can see when the video gets half a million views and the song that's in the video straight away gets all these streams and people are listening to the full song. Um, and um, hmm. which, which I, and it, before that happened, I kind of would have been pretty skeptical that people listening to music on TikTok wouldn't necessarily appreciate the whole thing. But if, if people are, are, are going to TikTok to find new artists that it's a platform that they then leave mm. and then they go and listen to your music and we hope then go and listen to the rest of your music and we and we, you do find that like when when our song disorder went viral all the all the streaming numbers for all our other songs all went up loads so they yeah, clearly for, are for discovering music is maybe the, the best tool but uh, the times have changed i i understand and the le the lesson that i learned is that you need to adapt uh, for the changes, uh, yeah. Kerrang magazine. I think that nowadays uh, is not in paper anymore. It's uh, no longer paper. It's only mm -hmm. in, in website. It's a a sample that the the times have changed because in my in my childhood, if you want to know about a band, you need to buy a a magazine in the in the library. Yeah. You know. Is, well, that's even that's the same I, for our childhood. I still do it. I still. He still buys magazines. Metal wow. Hammer. Metal Hammer. They, they still print <laughs> Metal Hammer. Hammer. Yes. Yeah. And um, so, so that's nice. Um, <laughs> but yeah, obviously there used to be a lot more. But um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You are all school. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, can you recommend me some some bands from UK? Yes. Uh, well, I don't know if I'm cheating, but. Calva Louise, they they are a UK based band, but they have three international members. So they have one member from Venezuela, one member from France, and one member from New Zealand. But they formed in wow. the UK, 
Um, and they're amazing, Calva a Louise. A good combination. The, can yeah. you repeat me the name? Calva Louise. Okay, it's the first time that I, I, I hear. I think they might have played Resurrection sure. Fest. But yeah, they're maybe. amazing. They're, ah, yeah, the, in they... the last edition of Resurrection, yes. I, I can keep them. an maybe. eye. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they might have done. Um, yeah, they're every, I mean, we opened for them in July in, in Birmingham and um, we've seen them a few times and every time you watch them, it's just an education. They're just, <laughs> they're, so good. they're just the best musicians. Yeah. And another okay. band who I feel like you've probably already heard of, you don't need me to recommend it, but Nova Twins. Nova Twins. Yes. I, I assisted a, a show in a math cool Madrid festival uh, yeah. two years ago or, or the last summer. I don't remember very well. And it's a it's a, a good band, amazing band. Amazing <laughs> yeah. band, yeah, yeah we yeah, love yes. them. In Spain, I think that uh, play a lot. Eh? Uh, this summer, uh, they play it in a punk rock festival. I assisted in in Math Cool, that is a pop rock festival. Uh, he did. They did uh, very well. The um, they built a career step mm. by step, but in, in a good way, I think. Yes, we find them so inspiring. Yeah. Um, and obviously they're on the same label as us now. So we are yeah, we're label. on the same wow. record label and they we just think they're amazing and we want to follow in their footsteps. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And you told me about uh, one of your dreams is play it in Resurrection Fest. <laughs> yes, oh, that's yeah. right. That's right. We want to come to Spain. Yeah. Okay. And it's a goal that you you try to do this year, then 2025, or in a short, short term or long term? Yeah, we'd love to play 2025. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it, it's easy to be a bit, to get a bit too humble with ambitions, I think, sometimes. Like last year, this time last year, I remember saying, I want to play Download Festival next year. And it sounded like a completely stupid thing to say because there was no, like we played 2000 Trees Festival last year, but there was no real indication that we maybe would play Download. Like they, they was, it would have been a pretty big step up, but we did, it was a step up and we did do it. So yeah. there's no, um, so I think from that, we've kind of learned, you just kind of have to, you have to say what you want to do. And yeah. like, yeah, I mean, next summer, 20, summer 2025, we want to play Resurrection Fest. Resurrection Fest. <laughs> okay. Okay. And we want to play, you know, all of the other. Uh, yeah, we want to play rock and ring, rock and rock park, for people, rock for people. Okay, the, we want to go the big out festivals. To okay, yeah. I, Hellfest. I, I hope Hellfest. I hope that uh, I can assist your live shows uh, soon, as soon as possible. Yes, and yes. And if if it will be the next summer, uh, <laughs> it, it will be a a good day for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I like when I talk with uh, young people with dreams, with um, energy, uh, high vibes, good vibes. And I feel that you have a, a great future in the music. Okay. Uh